Merhaba, annyeonghaseyo, and namaste. Hi, it's Tom from Green Shorts, and today I'm entering the world of Aircrete. And I'm gonna use Franken foam. This is a foam generator that I've made uh, to practice, and you can tell by the number of couplings here that I've taken this apart a couple times to redo what's inside. What I'm going to make with the Aircrete is a K-type rocket stove. And for the forms, I'm gonna use these scraps of foam insulation. For my foaming agent, I'm gonna be using this Palm Olive Professional Dishwasher Liquid. It says it will wash 7,000 dishes. Doesn't tell me how much Aircrete I'm gonna make. <laughs> we'll find out. I'm gonna use a ratio of 40 to one. So 40 parts water to one part of liquid. I've seen different ratios mentioned. I've seen 30 to one, 160 to one, and I think all of those reference the different detergent. So you may just have to figure out what you got and what works. So we're gonna start with 40 to one. So for my two and a half gallons of water, half of a five gallon bucket, I'll be adding one cup of liquid. And just get a little bit of mixing here, but I don't want this to foam up too much. Before I make any foam, obviously I need to get my forms set up. And I'm gonna build my foam forms on this OSB with this vinyl layer in it. that will act as my base, and I'll put the forms on top of this. Ah, and here's the train. Nice and loud. We love the train. Someday I'm gonna show you the train. Using my twisted Sharpie from Greg's Garage. I'll put the link in the description if you want one of those. All right, so I've got my general shape cut out for my form, including a little notch here for the underside of the, the feed tube. So now I'm gonna cut this out, and I'm gonna cut it into two pieces so I can unform it more easily. All right, so here's the form for the side of the stove, and now I'm actually gonna make a second one of these. All right, so I got the forms for my two sides created, and now I'm gonna use the blanks from inside to create the other parts. I've got a five inch dimension here because I want to have a four inch square interior for the riser. So I need a four inch piece that's gonna go here, all the way down, a four inch piece here, a four inch piece here, and then one here as well. And I've got this one notching in to help with stability. For the bottom of the stove, I'm going to do a double thick floor because I want it to have a lap joint here for the sides to sit on top of. Because I'm gonna both glue this together with some adhesive stove mortar and I'm going to band it with some metal banding. I've heard you can actually screw this stuff together so I may try that as well once we see how the consistency of the aircrete turns out. It's important that the base of your forms be flat, and this is not. So uh, I'm gonna find something that is.
this is the back side of the riser and now I'm gonna put two more segments in here for this the small elements of the firebox so the first piece I'm gonna make is gonna go underneath that piece so it's gonna come in and it'll have a straight angle here but when I make this piece it's going to need to have a 45 degree angle on it here to match up For the block I'm going to put in here um, to make this part, I'm going to go ahead and put a 45 degree angle on this edge to make the second part. So this particular piece is going to come down inside here. So. So I need to measure that dimension to here, not to here. All right, so on this form, I've got this piece and this piece as well as the back piece. So now I need to do two more forms to make the bottom of the feed tube here and that's gonna actually extend down in. And then I need to make the bottom. This will be air channel underneath here, firewood coming in here, airflow coming in there. A lot of the boxed metal versions of this that you see will actually channel the airflow as well, but I think this opening, bringing it in underneath this ramp, is just going to be fine. It may actually speed up the air as it gets pulled in, um, in that funnel shape. So we'll see. Piece is a nine and a quarter and the first four and three eighths is going to be five inches and then the second section here is gonna be four inches. This will be the front here and it is not gonna have a ledge like we'll have on the back and the sides. So just straight double thick there. I'm actually gonna stop here and I'm gonna flip this one because I want the uh, the same texture on the outside of both sides and to, to do that they would need to be in reverse so thankfully I just have a couple of screws in here let's pull those out but I am using the same cutout that I use for this side for this side. There would be a slight variation in the two pieces because they were cut by hand. So the more I can make sure these match, the better.
All right, with that, the forms are done. Let's make some foam. All right, so before I mix the Portland cement, I'm gonna go ahead and add my foam liquid to the generator. And to set this up, I've already got air pressure on here, but I've got that valve turned off. I'm also gonna close my ball valve. So I've got Franken foam propped up here on the bucket. So he's on an incline and I'm gonna load it with liquid. It's a little foamy because I tested it and so it'll be pushing some foam back out but the liquid's going down. All right, so I got about four cups in there and that'll be enough for the amount of aircrete I want to make. So I'm gonna mix up a small batch of Portland cement. All right, so I'm gonna lean the generator up against the bucket and make sure that my elbow is facing down and then I'm gonna slowly release the air pressure and it will start making foam. The consistency I'm looking for here is shaving cream. All right, that's about enough foam. So I'm gonna shut it off and then we'll mix it in. I think that's too much foam. So what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna mix in some dry cement. All right, that feels more like cake batter to me. And since we're still in this experimental phase, I'm gonna go ahead and, and go with this consistency. We'll let it cure and see how it comes out of the form. All right, so I'm gonna fill each form with the aircrete and smooth with a trowel. I don't wanna agitate it though, like we would with normal concrete to get out the air bubbles because we want the air bubbles. I'm concerned about this little point right here. So I'm actually gonna stick a screw into the concrete there. This isn't an area that's gonna get super hot, so we won't necessarily have to worry about heat differential. All right, so now we've got a couple of weeks of cure time, and I'm actually going to do a second part to this video where I unform 
build the stove and fire it. It's been a long video and I want to make sure this has enough time to cure correctly. If you know how to make air crete and I'm talking to you honeydew carpenter and air crete Harry, y'all have some great content on that. Tell me what I did wrong. Um, maybe it was the ratio, maybe it was the mix. Uh, I'm curious. Anybody else that has feedback on my technique and this material let me know i'd love to know in the comments because i am just getting started with this i'm excited to get to use this material to get to learn it because i think there's lots of things that can be done with it certainly related to fire and you know me i like fire so a big thank you to my patrons for helping make these videos possible and a welcome to paul schramm who is my latest patron paul thank you so much for your support and I'll see you over on the Patreon feed. As always, our mission here at Green Shorts is to help you see green so you can be green. And save a little green by doing it yourself. Thanks so much for watching. Please like and share. Keep all the great comments, tips, and suggestions coming. And we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.